Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about some more Nmap options. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about the Null Scan and the Christmas Scan. I'm sure you've seen these, but let's make sure that we understand how they work and why we would use them. So stick around. All right, so you know the deal. Let's go ahead and get out Nmap and a copy of Wireshark and let's capture what these scans look like. So as you can see here, I have Kali Linux, but I also have a couple other virtual machines running. Now, one is a Linux server, and the other one is a copy of Windows 10. So I'm gonna run these scans against those two different types of operating systems, so not just to capture them, but also to understand how different operating systems will respond. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with the Christmas scan. We're gonna run it toward the server first. Let's see what happens. Gonna go ahead and come in here. Now, let's think about what our syntax is gonna be. So first is gonna be sudo, but what is the switch that we're gonna use? Think Christmas, scan. Scan, Christmas. Okay, it's gonna be dash S, capital X. All right, so let's go ahead and punch that in and scan our server. All right, we can see those packets coming in in Wireshark in the background, and we can see that there's a whole lot of ports that are open on this server, and we found them with that Christmas scan. Now, notice with the Christmas scan, it says open filtered. Okay, let's come over here and let's actually see what that looks like or what that means. Gonna go ahead and open up Wireshark, just expand this out just a little bit for you. Gonna go ahead and zoom in just a little bit and reorient my columns and just give myself a little bit of screen in real estate there. So in the background, first I wanna notice what is an open port that we have over here? Let's go ahead and pick on port 21 and see what that looks like and why it showed open filtered. See, that's different than like the SIN scan or the connect scan, those just show open but this one says open filtered, let's see why. All right, so if I come up here, I'm just gonna do tcp.port equals equals 21, and that's gonna set a filter for just conversations on that port. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at this packet. So here we can see that this is a TCP packet. We can see in our info column up here, the different TCP flags that are set. All right, we have the fin flag, the push flag, and an urgent flag. Now, if we expand that out in our TCP header, we can actually see those with a little bit more detail. But notice the acknowledgement flag is not set, and that's pretty unusual. Typically, past the sin in most conversations, you're gonna see the acknowledgement flag. So really, these are all the extra flags. It's lit up like a Christmas tree, and that's why it's called a Christmas scan. It's basically all the flags except for some of these other important ones like sin, reset, or acknowledgement. It's all the rest of them. Okay, so we send this packet out and what's the response? Well, if you notice, we didn't get a response from the server at all. We didn't get a reset. That would indicate that the port is closed, but we just got nothing. So what Nmap sees is no response. So that's why it flags it as open. But the thing that it can't tell is was this packet filtered by a firewall that simply wasn't responding? And that's why it says that it's possible that this is open but filtered, and that's why we didn't get a response. Okay, so we can see how this looks when we pointed this scan to the server. Now let's go ahead and point it to the Windows box and see if it's any different. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the scan over here, and I'm just gonna come over and go ahead and rerun my trace file, continue without saving, and let's just go ahead and run our scan. Okay, so it says here on the scan results, all 1,000 scan ports on this device are closed. And we can see the response, or at least to port 21 in the back. Remember, I had that filter set there for port 21. So we send out that Christmas scan, we got a reset back. That means that that port is closed. Now, what's interesting about this, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this filter here. And so this was a bit of a different response that we saw with Windows, right? But is that because it just doesn't have any ports open? Well, let's find out. Remember that we had a thousand scan ports and all of them were listed as closed. But let's go ahead and run a stealth scan against that Windows box and see what happens. It's gonna hit up arrow, but this time I'm gonna come back over here. Instead of SX, what's it gonna be for a stealth scan? S capital S, right? Stealth scan, okay, good job. So let's go ahead and run that scan. Okay, and as you can see in the background, we were still capturing, but notice we have a few open ports here. We have port 135, we have 139 and 445. All of those ports are open on the Windows box. All right, so why would the stealth scan show some ports open, but the Christmas scan show nothing open? All right, this is important to know. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna stop my capture. This time, let's go ahead and filter for a port that showed as open, but not open in the Christmas scan. All right, so I'm just gonna say tcp.port. Let's go ahead and filter for 135. 
All right, so here we can see that we have two different behaviors. On the one hand, we can see that this packet comes in, this is the Christmas scan, and immediately it gets a reset ACK. So the Windows box is saying, nope, I'm not talking on that port. But with a SYN, we can see that the device responds with a SYN ACK. So it says, yep, okay, I'm willing to talk to you. We can go ahead and talk if this is a SYN. So what does that tell us? Well, some operating systems are tuned this way. They're going to respond with a reset if it looks like something's out of sorts, which really a Christmas scan is just that. It's not normal. Uh, usually you wouldn't see normal, healthy TCP packets that look like this. So the Windows box is designed to say, you know, I'm not gonna participate in this conversation. Something looks funny here. While the cell scan worked, it did confirm that there was an open port. So as you can see, some operating systems will respond with a reset and others will not. Okay, so that was the Christmas scan. Let's go ahead and take a look at the null scan and see how that's different. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and restart my capture. And say continue without saving. And let's come over and let's just clear out our terminal. All right, so now we're gonna do the null scan. So let's just go ahead and do sudo and map. And this time we're gonna go ahead and do the null scan. And anyone remember what that switch is? Dash S and capital N. All right, nice job. All right, okay, so we're gonna do 192, 168 and fire it off to the server. So here's our results. It's really the same list as we saw with the Christmas scan, at least toward the server. Let's go ahead and see why it's called a null scan. All right, so we're gonna come over here. We're gonna stop our capture and let's go ahead and set that filter for TCP port 21. Okay, so let's examine what this packet looks like. I'm just gonna click it and we can see in the info sneak peek that we have none, no flags are set. If we come down here into the TCP, we have flags of none and look at that. All of the bits in the flags area of the header are zero. So again, very rare. This wouldn't be usually there in a normal healthy TCP conversation. Okay, just a little side note, something that we can do here. We can always just say right click on flags. We can go prepare as filter selected and check us out. Now we have a filter for a null packet. That's a nice one to save if we have a security profile. So I'm just gonna say TCP null scan. So now I have a filter. I don't have to remember that flags parameter. Now I can come up here and I can hit TCP null scan and I go ahead and set that so I can find these types of scans. So we can see how these scans work. The Christmas scan, the null scan, we just captured and saw those. And really we can even further manipulate the headers to adjust certain flags. Now it really just depends on the operating system on how it will respond. But why would we use these scans in the first place? Why wouldn't we just use a SYN scan all the time? Well, if we just peek at the Nmap site right away, it says the key advantage of these scan types is they can sneak through certain non-stateful firewalls and packet filtering routers. Okay, so what that means is basically along the path or even at the endpoint, those devices may be expecting a SYN to start a TCP conversation. So when they see a packet that comes and it doesn't have a SYN bit checked, it's possible that they might pass it through. Now, keep in mind, a lot of times operating systems and IPS IDS systems are designed these days to watch for this. So it's really not as stealth as it used to be. However, it is interesting to be able to see how a device would respond. Right away, we were able to tell that some operating systems will respond a certain way to these scans and others won't. It's also possible that an operating system might not log this, right? So if we hit it with a SYN, it might go, oh, there was a SYN attempt here. But if we hit it with a null scan or a Christmas scan or that type of scan, it's possible that it won't log that connection. So keep on practicing by capturing those Nmap scans with Wireshark and understanding more about how they work and why we would use them. Thanks for stopping by the channel. I'll see you again on another video.